Hello and welcome to GG Weekend Watch, kindly sponsored by Bet MGM, and we are on to our fourth and final day of our Cheltenham Festival 2024 preview. My name is Kate Tracy, joining me as ever, Andrew Matt and Dave Young, to look ahead to the final glory say, whether or not it's get out of jail six or whether or not you're splashing out on the winnings come at the fourth and final day. Either way, hopefully we'll still find you some more winners because we're going to begin with the grade one at Triumph Hurdle, four-year-olds over two mile one at 1.30. And the Brits, we've got a right one in this one. Sergino, really sure prize favourite now at 8 to 11, heading the way 6 to 1 bar about the remainder, Dave. So, yeah, Nikki Henderson, hopefully the stable form is all there again, all in good working order. And Sergino could go and trounce these. Yeah, I think he does as well. Like he would be, I well, talked about like favourites, especially in TFP. I'll give him another mention. I, I think like the prize that he is, he's 4 to 6 with a lot of the bookmakers. I think a top prize 8 to 11. He's a little bit of odds against on the exchange i think he's one of the best short priced favorites of the week i know it's juvenile division but he just looks so much better than him he all almost already looks like he's like a five-year-old like he's a novice hurdler running the juvenile we've seen how juveniles might struggle the season after i don't believe that sergino will i think he's already ready to go which is going to give him a massive advantage i don't see how he gets beat personally so I know that's really unoriginal and a bit boring. So I've done. I, I do think the the one to mention that if you want to have like an each way bet, and I do think you'll get more places on the day as well. So consider that. But Storm Hart that ran at the Dublin Racing Festival was beaten in the Spring Juvenile, and we've seen quite a lot of times that that's good form in Ireland. Um, but we have seen that it's been reversed as well. The year that Mr. Adjudicator and Far Class clashed against each other, they reversed the form when it came to Cheltenham. Um, and it, it's not beyond the realms of possibility that Storm Hart does that with Car Geese. Um, she's relatively unexperienced but i think that storm art 10 to 1 would be the each way play if i had to have one i do fully expect shigino just to absolutely dot up but yeah i probably would have some sort of saver on storm heart i reckon You've literally just read my mind where Storm Heart is the each way play. The more, yeah, the, the horse at the price I'd be more willing to back than Sergino. Expecting Sergino to win because he does just look a proper horse. And I'm really hoping for big things from him. But yeah, Storm Heart, I can easily forgive last time out. The pace was really holding up that day. Danny Mullins just couldn't stop riding winners. Left, right, centre. Another one with car geese. And as you say, we tend to see that form <laughs> from left of sound and being reversed going to Cheltenham. And Storm Heart, I don't think he was given any sort of uh, option more run through than at that stage um he got stopped at a crucial time but you look at his win prior to that my word was he impressive the way that he just powered away from his rivals to him by 22 lengths and still he's probably from the irish horse is the only horse that's posted a wow performance for me on that penultimate start so um yeah hopefully it'll start drying up by that point as well than for Stormheart for the each way play but dave and i are thinking along pretty similar lines andrew are you going to join us or are you going solo yeah, I'm in agreement. I think Sergino will win. Um, yeah, the, the spring juvenile hurdle for Mill finished in a bit of a heat, really, didn't they? Yeah. So, uh, there's a slight question mark over that. And generally, it pays to side with grade one form last time out. You go back to 2012, 12 renewals, just back any horse who ran in a graded race last time, regardless of where it finished, you'd have hit the winner eight times from 37 bets, uh, made a profit of uh, over £36 for a £1 stake. And in the four blank years, you'd have got through the place part in three of them, including... Uh, when the the two qualifiers were uh, second and third at seven to one and ten to one, so yeah, look, concentrate with Grade One form. It's really hard to look beyond Sergino. Yes, again, very very similar mindset. Then difficult to look beyond Sergino. So hopefully Nicky Henderson will get that winner then with him. Right, perhaps some more betting, uh, competitive betting heat on the next race because it always is. This is the County Handicap Hurdle, of course, the Premier Handicap five rows and over over two mile one at. 210. Now we have seven to on the field, headed by King of Kingsfield at this stage, Andrew. So plenty to get stuck in in this one. Of course, the Bureaucro Lord is in there and prominent in the betting, but we did see the news earlier on then about him. So again, we're still yet to see the final makeup of this race. Is he trained by um, uh, Dan Skill or Willie Mullins? <laughs> Neither of them at the oh. head of the market is. <laughs> Can't win then. I mean, no. um, those two trainers combined have won eight of the last nine renewals uh, of this race. Um, Skelton's four from 15 in his career, plus 75 pounds. Uh, Mullins, um, six from 52, plus 37 pounds, 25. You know, really pays to concentrate on these two yards. And you could argue that Dan Skelton's won it more than four times because uh, when he was assistant to Paul Nichols, 
um, there were um, three county hurdle wins for the Nickel Yards Yard in quite six, uh, quick succession. Since Skelton set up on his own, the the Nichols runners in the county hurdle have uh, not done uh, half mm -hmm. as well. So, yeah, so basically, you know, he, he struck last year with Favreau, didn't he? Was he 33 to 1? And uh, I, I think it would just be a case of uh, on the day, load your place pot with um, horses from those two yards. I haven't sort of picked between them yet. Um, but uh, yeah, looking at the betting, um, uh, Lotus, uh, Lotus, Lotus Sud is uh, the shortest price of the uh, skeleton runners, but we saw that year that last year that doesn't always uh, necessarily um, mean anything. So yeah, just look for those two trainers, but I've not picked between them yet. No, yeah, Lourdes said Favoir also in there again at about 25 to 1 for the skeleton yard. But yeah, you know the yards to follow then, Dave. Is your selection trained by either of the aforementioned trainers? Absolutely, it is. I'm not stupid, am I? I feel like Friday I'm sort of covering myself a bit more than some of the other days, but I do think the racing tends to be a little bit more open on the Friday. So I, I do I do respect King of Kingsfield. Again, I, he's another horse that uh, earlier on I crabbed him a little bit, a bit like a John Bonney type one, and then I'm starting to warm to him a little bit. Hmm. But by Ali Stock, ran behind him in the Royal Bond, wasn't given the best ride that day. He's a quirky horse. He was gelded last January. I think this horse, when they put Hood on him last year, went at Punchestown. I, I think this horse is, of the two form lines between those two, by Ali Stock would lap king of kingsfield he was brought down at the dublin race festival it was two out but because they doled off the last flight it was on the corner it was miles out. you couldn't tell if he was going to win or not i know that william Munners likes this horse he's got to fit a new profile now that it's got to be four runs into these novices uh to run in a race like this i think by Addy stock is the first string for william Munners. i think i think he's got a right chance he's a, he's a bit he's not he's not a massive price considering i think he probably wants better ground though so he's about 10 to 1 at the time of recording I, I mean, I'll be I'll be tempted to hold off on him. Another one for Willie Munnings I've got to mention is Westport Cove. Now, this one I've been holding back a little bit. We've done a couple of previews. I haven't mentioned him yet. But he's a pound lower than this key de bourbon, what we'll come on to for the Martin Pipe. Um, he's run behind Tully Hill, so he's hidden a little bit in plain sight, I think, in that Tully Hill race on the 18th of February. Now, on figures... He was 12 lengths behind Tully Hill. You'd say, well, if you're tipping him in this race, Dave, then you must think Tully Hill's a certainty with the Supreme. I don't, but I don't think they were trying their best with him in that race in February. I think it was a case of getting a run in, so he could come here. Uh, Westport Cove, I think, has got a proper, proper chance. So he's 16 to 1, so I'd happily stick him in the play spot and stick him in a few perms as well. And then, oh, sorry, Andrew? No, I was just going to say, Miss, can I just, um, when Dave's finished, mention a couple of outsiders that are not trained by Skelton and Mullins? You oh, may, yeah. you may when your time comes. <laughs> yes, when your time comes, I've, I've got I've got eight more to go through. No, I haven't. The, the two winning <laughs> money is ones I like. By any stock, I would probably prefer, but I don't know if the ground's going to help him, but I'll, I'm happy to play the two of them. The one thing on Lerda Sid, which is obviously is the um, the Dan Skelton type one, it's just got to be mentioned because a colleague that I did um, a preview with, Paul Beck, we it, he mentioned about Iberico law being supplemented for the champion hurdle, which has happened. And he said whether that happens or it doesn't happen, obviously, if it does happen, it's a big tip in its well, not a tip in itself, but it's a big nod towards Lerda Sid finishing so close from the bet for a hurdle if they think that he could uh, run well in a champion hurdle. So, like Lerda Sid, I, I think he's going to be the one that shortens up. He's 12 to 1 at the time of the recording. I'd give him a little bit of a squeak, but I think he'd be held for win purposes. So, by Ali Stock and Westport Cove would be the two that I'm happy to go to war with. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't really have a massive preference over even price wise. I'd probably side more with Westport Cove, but I think Bailey Stock's got a better chance. Sound like an idiot, don't I? I should probably just stop now. No, <laughs> not at all. We were allow, we can allow you to have both of those. <laughs> Sixteen to one Westport Cove, Fed MGM, and Bailey Stock twelve to one as well. But of course, again, do watch out for Low De Sud though. In there, currently about twelve to one, and what he's going to do price wise, Andrew. Go for yeah, it. Um, just a couple of um, favour and fortune who I mentioned for the Supreme Brandon King is a shorter price for this run about 25 to 1. So again, the big field, strong pace angle uh, would apply. And an interesting one based on what we saw in the Moor Battle Hurdle at Kelso last Saturday, uh, Jungle Jack um, went over fences, um, didn't take them, pulled up at Weatherby in November, had a wind operation, came back from a break, ran second to Cracking Rhapsody at Kelso last month. Um, splitting Cracking Rhapsody and Ginger Mail, who ran 1-2 in the Moor Battle. So that performance received a timely boost. Uh, and at this time last year, he beat Hon Public by three lengths in a handicap hurdle at Bangor. And uh, that one's improved since. So slight worry that he won't be effective in a big field if he races close to the pace. We often see the winner of this race coming from well back. But uh, I thought Jungle Jack, 50-1, to 1, could run a race on his second run after a window. 
big, big prize then as well. I'm pl pleased that we managed to get that one in there and uh, and one of a flag in the muff. Right, that was the county. We move on to the 250, the grade one. Albert Bartlett, novice to saddle, five runs and over, over three miles. But now, again, we have some well it's competitive in terms of the betting reading tommy wrong six to one 13 to two dancing city high pass zero 15 to two nine to one bar about the remainder so dave back to you then for the slow novices yeah i mean it's a it's a i do like i always love this race right i think it is a good renewal this year there's lots of horses that have got good chances you'd be hard pressed i think for anyone to have a strong enough opinion to say that anything's like a, a juicy price towards the top of the market um, so I, I've, I, Chapeau de Soleil has been mentioned that he's going to run in the Bally, the bar in Bingham. When I see things like, uh, Bally Burns be going there, I just think that Willie might let him run in here. I still like Chapeau de Soleil. I've had him down as like a potato horse for a long time. So yeah. I've got to give him another mention because if he does come here, I'll, I'll have a couple more quid on him. I think he's got a squeak of place in. Again, to cite Paul Beck, right? I'd just like to mention the name because I'm stealing his thunder on this one. Put me onto a horse called Irish Panther at 50 to 1 for this race, right? We know we like a big price winner for this particular race. Go back to his bumper form, two lengths behind Factor Far. He was then sent off 11 to 8 favourite, went four and a half lengths second to Ballyburn. Got beat by Farron Glory on his hurdle debut, who then went and won the Raw Bond next time out. Then they put a tongue tie on after, dropped him back to two miles and got well beaten by Daddy Longlegs. But everyone was saying that Daddy Longlegs was the next best thing since sliced bread after that performance. He's just that type, right? I've said in the past, that as much as it's like boaty type horses and the slower novices, as you said, Kate, loads <laughs> of them have got good two mile form. Um, so I think this horse is, it, you know, it takes a few of the boxes to suggest that 50 to 1 isn't out of the realms of possibility. This horse could run a big race if, if he ran in here, but that's not really my work. That's someone else's, but it definitely needs mentioning for the viewers. So you're welcome, GG Weekend Watch viewers. You are most welcome for that, especially especially if it comes off then as well. But so, yeah, I mean, this race can spring, a, can spring an upset and a bit of a surprise, Andrew, can't it? Yeah, we've had 16 runnings of this race since it was awarded Grade 1 status. In that time, you could have bet all 287 runners and made a profit at SP. Plus £1.25, you'd have made up 166 quid at Betfair SP. Um, I mean, la last time out, winners tended, uh, I think, taken seven of those, but you'd have made a big loss back in those. Just back horses, you finished second, third or fourth last time out. You'd have made almost, um, uh, what was it, I think, uh, sort of, Oh, 59 quid for the one pound level state. So you're looking at, I find, four horses who've been sort of running well, getting out pace perhaps over sort of two and a half mile trips. Uh, one that does stand out is Johnny Who, who uh, uh, won in the first time tongue tie at Carlisle, then went to uh, the Channel Hurdle, finished a good fourth to Captain Teague, staying on well, then ran behind Gidley Park in grade two company here at Cheltenham, you know, again, getting out paced and then staying on at the end. So he does look to be crying out for the uh, for the trip. And 13 of the last 16 winners prepped in grade one two or three company so uh, so he kind of fits all the trends for the race you know second third or fourth last time out and uh prepping in a prepping in a graded race so yeah johnny who 20 to 1 at this early stage but i mean this is a race that can blow the place pot wide open last year the first three were i think 18 to 1 150 to 1 and 28 to 1 uh, the exact to pay 2800 quid so uh, yeah get that lucky pin sharpened I'm lucky, Pin. I am so pleased you said about Johnny Who because I've said about it beforehand that I was tasked at the start of the season to write up for and post bets then ahead of the Cheltenham Festival before the season even got going. So, Marine National for the Arkle. Boom. Queen's Gamble for the Mayor's Novices Hurdle. Boom. Irish Point for the Sayers Hurdle. Down. Johnny Who is my only one. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's going to be left standing to actually run in the race that I talked about them for. And I can't he, he's imagine just him. drifted from 20s to 40s. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just following the rest of them off of a cliff. There you go. There goes Johnny Who again. Um, yeah, so he's the only one. He's probably the one I didn't expect to still be there then for this. But 20 to 1 for the each way play about him as well. So I'm so pleased he fits those trends. I mean, yeah, you can massively forgive those last two runs. I mean, the Chalo. It was not, I don't think it was a great race whatsoever on his penultimate outing, but all he was doing was staying on that day. He was really eye catching. After looking like he was going to get tailed off halfway down the back, he really came back only to be beaten two lengths in the end. And last time out, then it just turned into a sprint that race behind Gidley Park. If I like Gidley Park, I've therefore got to like Johnny Who, who again, for all he was well enough beaten, the race just didn't suit him whatsoever. So again, he's had a side to at Cheltenham now. Finally, he'll be getting his trip. And yeah, he's still a horse I think a lot of. 
So, um, yeah, from the Antipost play at the start of the season, all hopes are lying on Johnny Who then in the Albert Bartlett. Not a bad each way double, Gidley Park, um, Johnny Who will be about oh. 300 to 1 plus. And, um, you know, sort of related contingency, if that form is, uh, you know, any good, then, uh, you know, no reason why both can't run well. No, well, hopefully so. Anyway, yeah, that's going to be the uh, the play for me. Uh, Dave, should I get your, your thoughts on the Albert Bartlett? Yeah, I stole. Well, it wasn't my thoughts, was it? I gave you Paul Beck's thoughts because oh, I'm Irish for her. <laughs> Got you, got you, got you. Right there, you go. So I'm losing track. We've done a lot of races now, one to one. But I make, want to make sure that we have not missed out on anyone's selections because, of course, we are now moving on to the big one itself, the Blue Ribbon event in National Hunt Racing, the Grade One Gold Cup for the Five Rods and Over, over three mile two at three thirty. Now, Gallop and shot back to retain his crown and he is a short price favorite to do exactly that at five to four fast or slow four to one in next shishkin 13 to two. what on earth is he gonna do andrew gold cup who wins this one yeah uh, I, uh, when i first looked at this a few months ago i was thinking oh you know maybe fast or slow each way at 10 to one you know he, he goes well in the spring he's run well at the last couple you know couple of Cheltenham festivals and um, you know, he's run well at Punchestown in the spring as well, but he's short enough now. And uh, I mean, it might just be that those wins over Gallop and Deschamps came because they were at Punchestown, a right handed track, whereas Gallop and Deschamps seems better this way around. I mean, he's had nine runs, the favourite, this way around, um, seven wins. That fall, of course, in uh, Bob Ollinger's turn is when he was 12 lengths clear and he came down at the last. Uh, and a six at 100 to one on his, uh, I think it was his second um, career start when he was uh, running Grade One Novice Company at the DRF in 2021. What was surprising that day? He was 100 to one. You can't imagine galloping to shop from what we know now, ever being 100 to one for for any race. So, um, you know, I mean, I took him on last year because I thought he's not, he's unproven in big field chases and it was a 13 runner Gold Cup and he, he still slaughtered Brave Man's game by seven lengths. Um, you know, I won't back him at the prize. I'll be looking for an each way alternative. Long Presse was uh, one such possibility. I, I wasn't um, worried about that defeat at uh, Ascot last time because he, he did his usual thing of jumping left on the right handed track, you know, getting away with it. it, it novice company was uh, quite easy for him, but not so last time out. Uh, Connections seem pleased with that as to put him spot on for this. But I'm going to side with Korash Rambler, who um, the betting suggests he's going to run here instead of um, in the Ultima, which of course he's won for the last two years. Now he's had four runs in his life in the months of March and April. He's won all four. I think he was a 12 to 1 winner at Carlisle a few years ago, won the last two Ultimas, and of course last year uh, won the Grand National. Now, although the um, you know, the Gold Cup, uh, the, the the new course on which the Gold Cups run traditionally favours front runners, I think six of the last ten Gold Cup winners have come from off the pace, and uh, you know there should be enough pace in here for him to aim at and you know clear round of jumping out the back, come wide, and uh, you know maybe get into the first three or four. So I'll go Korash Ramble each way as a sporting mm -hmm. alternative to the Jolly. 22 to 1 about him as well. Yeah, horse with uh, no end of Cheltenham Festival form then to his name. And there should be a good enough pace, I thought, then in this year's Gold Cup as well that may well tee itself up nicely for him. Dave, what was your betting angle into the Gold Cup? I don't no, I don't think I've got one. I, I was looking a little while ago that I thought a Hoy Senior at 81 was mad because I started to go down the field. Gallup in the Champ deserves to be favourite deserves to be as short as he is as well to be fair so you do try to look for the each way play but i felt like going down every single runner look i know a hoist in your protector at confetti all going ryanair but in the context of this race and the prices that they were you can make conceivable cases for everything i mean the ground's probably gone against stewick a little bit but he just won that king george staying on like a boat didn't he like it's 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 a it's a proper gold cup this for me is as good a gold cup as i can ever remember and then when i start to say things like that out loud i then go back to the fact that gallop and jump is five to four and i think oh, like the logical head says he's, he's like it's the most competitive race he's ever going running in his life we know how good he is it would just be nice to watch him win i think rather than invest any money in it because he'll have earned legendary status if he beats this entire field i think he's run last year as well i i i, I I didn't think things went exactly to plan last year. And then Paul had to ride him slightly differently than they might have wanted to. But that was fine. The horse is very versatile. But I don't even think he was at his best last year when he won the Gold Cup in the fashion that he did. But he will certainly need to be at his best to win this Gold Cup. So he's obviously got a favourites chance. I wouldn't want to be betting him. I'd definitely happily sit back and just let whatever unfolds in the Gold Cup happen. Because every horse deserves to take their place in this one, I think. 
Oh, exactly that. And yeah, what a lineup we've got then. Super, super competitive Gold Cup, which we like to see. But sit back and enjoy it, says Dave. As we move on to the next race, now we're over the same course and distance as the Gold Cup, of course. But it is the turn of the Hunter Chase. It's the St. James's Place Festival Challenge Cup. Open Hunter's Chase. Catchy again. Five rods and over. Three mile two at 4.10. Uh, it's on the line heading the way, though, Dave. But uh, yeah, we do have some intrigue in this race. Yeah, JP McManus is sport. It's on the line as well, isn't he? Yeah. Well, can't really for the life of me work out why, other than he's bought it to get a winner on the Friday, which then makes me worried about all the other JP McManus <laughs> horses on the Friday. <laughs> but like, I, I, I would have put up it's on the line anyway for this race. It's not a race that I, uh, I, I really do get stuck into. The good old days are just back in South Safari every year. I, yeah. I definitely had my luck when Jay Mangan got tipped off um what was the oscar delta won it and then south by one so I, I almost just thought you know what I've, I've had my money in this race i've had my luck i'll leave it alone now i got slapped in the face when it came to pass one as well because i had that in my tracker for so long and just just never even thought about it i was 125 to one with it so i won't ever uh, ever heavily invest in this race it's on the line staying on nicely last year um had a bit of a tough day the last day didn't he but yeah, you've got a favourite chance in there. I'd rather be back in Gallop and Deschamps in a really competitive Gold Cup at five to four than back in anything in the Fox Hunters at five to two, though. I don't blame you. Yeah, that's probably sound advice, isn't it, really? A nine to four, it's on the line, though. And yeah, and really interesting with his new ownership, Andrew. I mean, Hunter Chase is uh, something I've never actually really asked you about before now. Is this another one of your... Uh, Strings to your bow, or what no, are you thinking of it? Generally, races I avoid. Although when I was writing spotlights for the Racing Post, you'd get them every now and again, so you had to, you know, um, in the pre-internet days, get your Mackenzie Selby and Harris, and uh, you actually have some idea of what you were talking about, um, just so you weren't completely clueless. Um, I, I've got sort of uh, other people I will ask about these races when it, when it comes to assessing it. But one angle to note is that um, nine of the last ten winners came from off the pace. Because although, you know, the new course, as I've said many times on this pod, is a front runner's track, in this race, the amateur riders tend to get the bit between the teeth, go off too fast and whoosh. So um, you get some very funny results. And again, this is another race that um, blew the place part apart last year when it paid about 25,000 quid to a one pound stake with a 66 to one winner. There is an interesting angle with 10 year olds. Um, in the last 10 years, if you put all the 10 year olds in the place part, you'd have got through to the next leg nine times out of 10. Um, so that might just be coincidence, but it's quite an interesting stat. And there aren't many among the current entries. One of those was half interesting was Time Leader. So I'll just make him a tentative stab at this uh, at this stage. Yeah, 10 year old though in there, about 20 to 1 then for Time Leader also. But um, yeah, nothing that I'm really going to be uh, heavily investing in or offering any sort of sage advice whatsoever. Right, now we move on to the 450. This is the Mayor's Chase, the grade two, five rows and over over to mile four and we do have one of those aforementioned short price favorites representing jp mcmanners here now i'm not going to let my bias uh cloud too much judgment so i'm gonna let the lads take this away because Zeno blue is the even money favorite allegory de bassi four to one five to one liberate lace then eight to one brides hill so andrew mez chase who wins better yeah, Zeno blue uh, put it putting my bookmaker's hat on you'd think you've got a chance in this race because you've got an even money favorite who's never run at the trip, but yet yeah. to race beyond two miles one. And you've got a second favourite in Allegoria de Vassi, who was beaten in the, uh, in the race last year when 13 to 8 favourite, and clearly needs to, or prefers, to go right-handed. And, you know, she jumped out to her right when, uh, you know, running running well, but beaten in the race. So you then start looking further down the field, and you've got other horses like Riviere Dettel, who needs to go right-handed. And you, you can pick holes in most of them. So the one arm is just going to come down on for a very sporting each-way bet, 80 to 1, I think, is Pink Legend for Venetia Williams. Now, she's had four, four runs on Cheltenham's new court in her life. Uh, two wins and uh, two places, a second and a third. The second in this race two years ago um, was behind Ellie May when she was beaten half a length at 33 to 1. And last year she was 33 to 1 again and she, um, you know, she ran well finishing, say, third by about seven or eight lengths, I think it was. So, you know, never out the first three and four runs at the track. And in a race that, you know, could easily fall apart and get one or two big price horses in the frame, I just thought she might run some sort of race. 80 to 1, really big price in about her to at least reach the frame as well. Dave, same question to you. Dino Blue, better side with her. 
No, thanks. No thanks at all. I mean, oh. JP, JP's got a good hand in this because he's got not only has he got Dino Blue that we don't know if she does stay, we've got Limerick Lace that definitely does stay and with bad ground as well. So he's got an even money favourite, five to one poke. Like he's got a proper, proper chance in the race this year. I will, I like, I think that Allegory de Vassi, the price that she is, is balmy, to be honest with you. I take on board exactly what Andrew's saying about her left handed, but left-handed the last day she finally got her head in front she seems to be getting better at doing that and obviously horses do learn with experience so where i touched on with tfp science has got a change for them to reverse the result of what they did last year two things have changed impervious isn't here so that's done her a massive favor and she's finally got her head in front left-handed and and she was weighted not to do so as well the last day now sometimes with the girls races i don't think the weights matter too much it just depends on which one of them turns up on the day so i'm happy to accept that she is probably unreliable but i think at four to one for a horse that was second in this race last year will stay and i do think that dino blue has to have a massive question mark about it they, they tried her at two mile four over hurdles i think it's fairy house wasn't it she she didn't stay but she was more keen then so there's a there's a chance to say that she will she just might be the one for the race next year she might just benefit for another year off of it and i think at the prices four to one allegory de Vassi is almost offensive again i think allegory de Vassi is a real good bet at four to one especially considering you could take the each way play and just have a little bit of safety on there. I know her jumping can be questionable, but she's definitely not outside the first three. And I think Allegory Devassi does win this. Oh, you're, you're offended about four to one Allegory Devassi then that price that I'm just offended on behalf of Dino Blue as a whole, because yes, bias is very much clouding my judgment because I say if I was, um, of course it is a significant question mark about the trip, but you've just said there, Dave, like she settles so much better nowadays. I know she's a proper out and out two miler because she's so fast and she goes forward she attacks her fences sometimes a bit too much and she is a proper proper two miler but she is far more settled than she looks it's just the way she carries herself in a big bowling ball action ground will be absolutely fine for her she will eat it up even if it's still soft on the day but she's got the speed if it is quicker also and um yeah i mean how i managed to get a beat off a of mark of 140 in the grand annual last year after riding her for a week i don't know but thankfully then for backers of her out there i will not be touching her the only time i'll see her will be thursday evening when she arrives from Aintree. so you have no fear on my input then on that front but uh, yeah i mean if this was over two miles Miles, what price would she be because that is really the question you're asking is that extra bit of distance but she's so hardy as well and her half brother blue sari funnily enough who i also rode for cheltenham week a couple of years ago and uh, led up in the coral cup and when he fell at the last one probably booked for second but he was very much a two and a half miler so i don't have too many issues over her getting the trip anyway and i'm just making sure i'm convincing okay, myself so the, that's the, the case the bookmakers will pay you to ride work on el fabiola at this rate. i know exactly yeah get the curse girl on them yeah she'll she'll stop them all <laughs> i know so yeah so good old princess dino hopefully she can get the job done as even money favorite for the mayor's chase right our final race god lads we flow through these but our final race on day four is of course the martin five conditional jockeys handicap hurdle four year odds and over over two mile four at five thirty. Always competitive. Not your get out of jail stakes that you really want, Dave, for your final race, but who wins it? I wonder if it is the getting out stakes this year, to oh. be honest with you. It's 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 always one of those races where you, you can get caught up in the moment because it is the last race of, of Cheltenham and you're always potentially from the first race on the Tuesday looking for multiples and looking for bets in there so please don't get carried away but I would say try and put this horse in a few multiples across the week and then get a few quid riding onto it especially each way multiples because there's no way this horse is outside the first five it's very unoriginal he is the favorite I'd rather he wasn't the favorite because the favorites record in this isn't necessarily the best but this Queen of Bourbon He's the type of horse, when you look in the past, when like a Gallop and Deschamps goes and wins this and you're looking for an absolute legend, he's the horse in this race that could do it. Now, Saint Majest has been a lovely smokescreen for this horse. Everyone's been talking up that that horse. I don't think they thought he was going to get the mark to get in the Martin Pipe, but then the handicapper did it because the handicapper thought, actually, yeah, run him in the Martin Pipe because we know you want to run him in the Coral Cup. But Giggins Town and Willie Mullins, we know they parted ways a long while ago, but they had a good record in this previously. Giggins Town themselves have got an incredible record in this race. The form of this horse, I touched on with that Westport Cove as well. I, I, I do just think this horse is a lot better than his mark. I, I think they know that as well with this horse, and I think they've known it from a very long time out. I, you, I have to like he is he is short now, but as I say, if you're if you're betting across the week and you want to stick him in a few doubles, even if it's with shorties or something to get a bit of a bigger price going on to him, 
I don't see anything other than him winning unless it's last year's second No Ordinary Joe I touched on because mm -hmm. as much as there's mention of this cloud around uh, Nicky Henderson, whichever way you want to spin it, he was the one horse in that period where everything was pulling up that didn't and ran quite well to, to qualify. So I think he's an obvious one if people want to bet one at a slightly bigger price, but even he's only 10 to 1. But yeah, this... um. Cree de Bourbon, I think, I reckon he could be the getting out stakes for punters, to be fair. Probably bad <laughs> cop for me to say that for a favourite in the Martin Pike, but I, I think I think he's a future Gold Cup winner. Oh, OK, that is likeable. Four to one then at Cree de Bourbon at the head of the market for Willie Mullins. And as you say, and there's gig and sound colours, but no ordinary Joe. Ten to one in there as well if you want to have a little bit of a saver on him. Andrew, Martin Pike, who wins? Yeah, no strong opinion, just a few stats to mention. Horses who prepped in a handicap last time, just four winners from 207 runners, uh, minus £147 or 71% on turnover. Last year's winner was one of those, but there were six losers as well, so you could have laid that 6-1 to one shot and you'd have still made money. Um, now, more interesting is the record of horses who ran in graded company last time out. Uh, seven winners from 52, profit of 24 quid. Of those, uh, 22 were trained outside of Ireland, only won one. The Irish horses who ran graded company last time, six wins from 30 starts, plus £31. So when you are uh, trawling through the form, have a look. So sort of also runs who were probably sort of outclassed in the graded race in Ireland last time out, who are now dropping in grade or you know probably running in a handicap for the first time. Okay, so there are plenty of trends then to go out when we have the final lineup as well for the Martin Fight Conditional Jockeys Handicap Hurdle, the final race on the final day of the Cheltenham Festival. So, Andrew, final chance to get your nap, please, for the Friday. Oh, I knew you were going to ask me that. Um, <laughs> did you? Did you know? <laughs> more about it. So, uh, um, good question, Kate. Yeah, it is. It is. A I'll, very go, I'll, good be there, I'll be very boring and go to Gino in the Triumph Hurdle. So Gino in the tribe, we will allow you that one. Dave, your nap of Friday. I mean, I was I was going to be just as boring as Andrew, but obviously I can't now. It's, <laughs> it's a hard one because it's competitive Friday. I would be equally as confident. I'll give you double nap then. This Key de Bourbon and Allegory de Vassi, no way one of them doesn't win. So I'll nap the pair. Oh, well, nice. OK, well, I'm going to mainly give you Key de Bourbon then because I'm going to go Dino Blue then for my nap of the Friday. And yeah, completely let bias cloud my judgment. Uh, Dave, you're lively outsider, please. I mean, it's a tricky one. I'd like to probably look at the county as well, but I think for the Albert Bartlett, again, the aforementioned Paul Beck that mentioned Irish Panther, you'd be silly not to have a, a non one no bet investment on that horse. But if Chapeau de Soleil does run in the Albert Bartlett, he's in the frame for certain. So Chapeau de Soleil be the lively outsider or Irish Panther in the Albert Bartlett. Neither of them might run, but uh, well, I've given you plenty of other winners, haven't I? Yeah, exactly. Well, we hope so by then. Anyway, yeah, we'll be we'll be checking that back at this stage. Uh, I'm also going to go with the Albert Bartlett then for the lively outsider, Johnny Who, because I mainly wanted to get in there before Andrew did. So, Andrew, you're a lively outsider. Got to be pink leg end in the mayor's chase. 80 to 1, pink leg end then for the mayor's chase. Right, we've covered very much for similar races, but all with different opinions on the Friday. Would you expect anything less from us? But that is our fourth and final preview ahead of the 2024 Cheltenham Festival. So a big thank you to Andrew and today for all of their hard work. We've chucked everything at them and hopefully they have answered the questions in really good style. The asset test will be in about a week and a half time, but Cannot wait for all of it. And again, a big thank you to our sponsors, Bet MGM for everything. Thank you so much to you for watching. Best of luck with your bets next week. Do remember to gamble responsibly, though. We always preach it and we do mean it, especially then with Cheltenham Festival, because uh, do make sure you still keep your heads and enjoy the fun out there. Best of luck next week. And again, we'll be back with plenty more content throughout the remainder of the season. <laughs>